Welcome to the Seller Roundtable e-commerce coaching and business strategies with Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Andy Arnott with Amy Wees. And this is Seller Roundtable number 106. And we have Gracie Ryback on today. Welcome, Gracie. Thank you so much for being on. Hi, Amy and Andy. Thank you guys so much for having me. Very excited to be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited too. I'm, I'm uh, like TikTok is, you know, I mean, it's, it's been out for a while, but for, uh, mm-hmm. for most of the, the, the Amazon people, you know, we're not like, you know, 16. So we're, 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 we're having to be brought into the fold. I mean, you know, we're not, we're not young and hip. So, um, you know, we're, we're going to, I, sh- I guess I should speak for myself, Amy, you know, maybe you're, you're, you're a little more up than I am, but uh, I am not. So I definitely need Gracie's help. So Gracie, thank you so much for being on. Uh, we always like to start with a little background. Uh, we know where you live and where you were born and raised, but everybody else doesn't. So give us a little background, you know, where you born, raised, school, uh, kind of your street cred up to today. Okay, sure, sure. So my name is Gracie. Hello, hello. I, I guess I would call myself an influencer in the Amazon space. Amazon influencer for the sake of a name. Um, I actually, just to give you a little personal background about myself, I grew up in the south of the United States. Um, and I, in college, I studied psychology and public relations. So we see where my, my degree went, (laughs) but, um, I, after college, I was working for Jordan Belford. If you guys are familiar with him, he is kind of big in the sales world. So I kind of got my start in, um, kind of a traditional sales sense. And then, um, late in 2020, I started a TikTok account. Um, where I would just share promo codes of the stuff that I found on Amazon. And I never started it with the intention of growing it to the size it is. And I really just started it because I personally would shop on Amazon every day. I would look for these promo codes. I would find them. and I'd be like, oh, I got such a good deal. I would want to share the the deal with my friends. And they'd be like, oh, I don't care, whatever, like, thanks, LOL, whatever, I don't care. And so I was like, wow, like maybe some people online might benefit from these people, these promo codes. And um, so that's how I started the account. And um, shockingly, I was able to pretty quickly grow a following there. Um, people really love the promo codes. I loved that I was able to help people save money and afford the things that they might not otherwise be able to afford. And so the community started growing. And um, at the start of 2021, I was able to kind of leave my nine to five and start content creation full time. And since I was able to do that, I started working with Amazon live um, to be like a live streamer or like live creator with them, um, which is just another kind of outlet where I can talk about Amazon products, promos, deals, stuff like that. Um, Kind of an extension of my TikTok family and also grow on other platforms. I have a Facebook group of 80,000 members and growing um, an Instagram, which is kind of a, another platform I'm, prioritizing enough, which is uh, like maybe 24,000 followers and like a Twitter account, which is small 2000 followers. But moral of the story, um, I have a community where I can share Amazon promo codes and deals with. And um, that's kind of where I'm at right now, content creation and sharing codes. That's kind of where I am. Awesome. So that sounds like fun because uh, <laughs> like pretty much anything you buy on Amazon, you can write off, right? So like that's a business expense if you put it online, right? You're like, woohoo. I so, actually didn't know that. I actually, I had well, no yeah, idea. I a, mean, like. Yeah, it's a business expense. If you're reviewing it, like, I mean, you could depreciate it. You can, I mean, you know, I don't know. Just saying. Andy, that's that, right. is, that is smart. That is smart. <laughs> I didn't think about that, but noted. <laughs> yeah. If it's if it's your business, you can write it off. So um right. yeah. Yeah. Right. So just make sure that if you sell it or trade it off that you you log that as well. But uh yeah, Did yeah, you know. that's a write off. <laughs> that can be de- 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 physical assets depreciated. So wow. yeah, you know me. I'm a geek. Uh learn more every day. Very smart, smart, smart. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So um uh so, so what kind of products, uh, you know, I'm always talking about this in terms of, I know that like visual products always work the best, right? But like, mm-hmm. what are some of the best products that you've maybe personally uh, uh, reviewed or uh, demoed that people like lose, lost their mind over? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I specialize in not technically having a specific niche. I'm not specifically fitness or beauty or tech or anything. I kind of specialize in deals and trending products, for example. So especially on TikTok, 
you know, that's like the, the home of all where trends start. Um, so there's a couple of products that um, if you are on TikTok, you will be familiar with them. If you're not, maybe it'll be kind of like, oh, interesting. I had no idea. But I'll name a couple of products. My first viral product that I posted on TikTok was actually um, a massage gun, which can be controversial because of the name and like some trends <laughs> on TikTok. <laughs> but um, that was the first product that went viral and kind of catapulted my growth. People, I think, I think um, the really important factor there was that it was kind of an expensive, high value product. It was going on Amazon for ninety dollars to like one fifty, sometimes two hundred. I found a promo code to bring it down to like thirty five dollars, thirty dollars, and people thought that was such an amazing deal. They sold it out a couple times over. Um, they were so happy. They've been wanting it for a while, and they were like, "Oh, finally, thank you, I got it with the promo code." So that was the first fiber product. And since then, a couple of other ones have come up, have come along. And um, of course, there are the, the TikTok leggings, which are literally what they're referred to as the leggings that make your butt pop. Those are really good. They've gone viral on my account. Um, the Galaxy projector that kind of just, you know, has the light and makes your room very like galaxy, very vibey. Um, and then maybe like recently there was the weighted hula hoop that you know uh, some people were like oh it makes you lose all this uh, stomach fat and whatever it's really cool um and one more one more uh recently it was chlorophyll and that was kind of a funny product for me because i had had this chlorophyll um that i i had before um but it went viral on tiktok and so all of a sudden i went on amazon to kind of find more chlorophyll that i could maybe buy and maybe do like a video about um, every single chlorophyll brand, not just one brand, every single brand sold out on Amazon. The entire chlorophyll like industry was like sold out, back ordered all because of TikTok. So that was, that was just a couple of products that uh, stand out in the, in the viral TikTok world. Nice. And I had a direct correlation with the, the market on Amazon. Right. Yeah. It's one of those things where, you know, if you, if you get, you know, uh, something trending on TikTok or a celebrity buys your product or something like that, you know, that's always mm -hmm. like the jackpot when it comes to, you know, somebody who's selling uh, yep. <laughs> consumer products. Yep. Um, are there, are, have, has anybody approached you to promote their product where you're like, uh, sorry, no, I will not promote that product? Yeah. So when I first started my TikTok account, I was like basically promoting all the cool products. I didn't think too much about like the product uh, that I was promoting because I wasn't technically in front of the camera. I was kind of just like showing the product page, the product listing, putting the code in and showing the price drop. And that's kind of my original format of video. As I started growing, I started putting more of my personality. I started, you know, doing voiceovers with my own voice. I started putting myself in front of the camera. And that's kind of changed um, the, the vibe of my account. It's more personal now. But in turn, now I have to kind of be more seriously vetting the products that I post about because if I if I posted something and I promoted it, I I am now standing behind it. And that is a lot more important just to uh, make sure that I'm not promoting something that, you know, could potentially be dangerous or bad quality or will eventually blow back on me if something happens. So now I, I tried to vet the product by looking at the reviews, um, just look at the product itself. I, I don't want to promote any like like sketchy like, you know, weapons or stuff like that, that could be considered weird. But um, I, there are a couple factors that I look at, such as reviews. Sometimes I ask for a sample of the unit just so I can try it myself and familiarize myself with it. Um, I, I don't love products that are like very clearly inflated in price and then brought back down like 80 or 90% to like a reasonable price. Like we all know this shirt is not actually $90. Um, and that's pretty transparent for my audience because my audience will call me out. They will be like, what the heck is this, Gracie? Like they, they, they are not shy with calling me out. So I do have to kind of be responsible with what I promote. <laughs> So um, I know like, like you're talking about products, how like, uh, you know, you, you can get some bad apples on products, but the same thing mm -hmm. goes for influencers, right? So like mm -hmm. if somebody's uh, looking to work with an influencer, like how should they vet somebody? How should they know that who they're working with is legit and not somebody who's buying like, you know, traffic or followers or likes or, you know, any of those kinds of things? 
Yeah. So I think as influencer marketing grows, and I think ever since 2021, it has absolutely boomed. And I'm so happy to see it because I think it's it's actually now like a, a serious career choice for some that, you know, people can make a full-time living off of this. And that's just amazing. Um, I think when a brand is trying to find or vet an influencer, I think um, there are a couple ways I would recommend first, like searching out the influencer. And there is a certain amount of research involved with this. Um, a good way to find them is going on social media, like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, stuff like that, using hashtags, maybe finding Facebook groups. Um, hashtags are a really good way to find influencers. And then um, I think as a brand owner, you should, uh, to be you know familiar with your product, is this a very niche product? Is this like a fitness product? Or is this like a certain niche? Um, is the selling point the the price or the the deal like what is the selling point of your product and based on the selling point find the influencer that matches your product because the 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 brand product and influencer match is very important um you're not going to find like a fitness influencer to uh, rep mcdonald's for example so that's a, a good betting process Luckily for brands, there are a lot of websites that can kind of expose influencers that are buying fake likes or fake followers. Um, a lot of influencers do. It's very transparent nowadays. If somebody has 100,000 followers on Instagram, why are they getting 200 likes on their picture? That's just not, it just doesn't make sense. So there are a lot of like websites you can go to to kind of like search for a specific account's engagement to, and they will expose and say like, oh, their engagement rate's really low or um, their followers aren't necessarily legitimate. Um, so luckily for brands, there are good ways to vet in that process. So to kind of make an extension off that point, um, as an influencer, once an influencer decides like, okay, I'm gonna start taking this seriously and I'm gonna really work on getting these brand deals and reaching out to brands, um, the next step would be to get a media kit. And with a media kit, the three things to focus on is engagement rate, conversion rate, and um, basically proven sales or content that has driven proven sales in the past. And I think those are the three most important things to focus on from an influencer standpoint, but also a brand should be able to ask for those three things when searching for an influencer. I love it, but we're going to make you spill the beans. What are your, what are like a couple of your favorite websites uh, that people can go and, and run that query? Okay. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Uh -oh, I put you I, on the spot. Yeah, 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 you did. So <laughs> you can tell us later. No, there's, there's one that I can basically get off, uh, get off the top of my head. I think it's called, you put me on the spot. You it's put all me good. on the spot. You, you'll, you'll, you'll tell us at the end. Yes, that, I, will, I will. At the end, we will tell you what those are so that you stay till the end, right? All right, Amy. Yep, yep. <laughs> stay till the end to get the, I like get it. the website. <laughs> I love that. Already hooking them in. So, I mean, my next question for you was actually how to find those influencers. And mm -hmm. you kind of talked about that during Mandy's last question where you talked about um, using hashtags. Mm -hmm. So you talked about using the product's selling point and, mm -hmm. um, and the promotion that you're going after. So, you know, for an influencer like you, you share coupon codes. So yes. if I'm running a really great launch deal, I could look for, even if I have a fitness product or any type of product, I could reach out to someone like you because you're, mm -hmm. there's a lot of deals influencers, right? So mm -hmm. just when I'm launching and I have a really good deal, I could look out to deals influencers to help me get the word out about my deal. But after that, when I'm looking to grow my product, you mentioned um, hashtags that I should be using. Mm -hmm. So can you give me some examples of how we might look for hashtags for, let's say I'm selling a, oh, I sell cat products. So let's say I'm selling a cat product. How do I find hashtags that are related to my product? Okay, And then good use those hashtags to find influencers. Yes, good question. So if you are looking for, I'll, I'll make two examples. I'll make like a deals example and relate it to myself. And then I'll answer your question about the cat product. Okay. So if I was a, a brand and I had a really good deal and I wanted to, you know, share this deal with like an influencer with big following, I would 
go on Instagram and TikTok and I would search the hashtag Amazon deals or uh, online deals, Amazon finds, Amazon must haves. Um, there's also a couple of other hashtags that other creators have um, created and it's kind of like, um, Amazon finds you didn't know you needed or, you know, cool Amazon finds, stuff like that, or like uh, deals, coupons, extreme couponing, um, something like that. Amazon promo codes, Amazon coupons, just like any kind of keyword hashtag that any kind of influencer might use. Those are good hashtags to use. So those are in the deal space. If I was a, a cat brand and I was like, OK, I don't necessarily have a deal. I have a little discount and I want to find an influencer. I would say cats of TikTok or uh, you know cats of Instagram um, or like cute pets, pet owners, um, you know pet products, um, something like that. Just like related hashtags to whatever niche you have, and try to go for a couple of broad ones. I, I would assume cats of TikTok or cats of Instagram would be pretty broad, probably yeah, millions or huge. billions of views. There yes. is. So yeah. Then, so I would have yeah. a hard time then narrowing it down. Yes. Right. So then once you kind of get that broad hashtag and kind of see what's under there, then you can kind of start niching down the hashtags. You could then be like, okay, like um, cat products or that's pretty big still. Um, I would say like, uh, gosh, I'm not in the, the pet niche. So I'm not super familiar with like pet hashtags, but uh I would just niche down as well and uh, try to see if um, you can just find a couple of influencers just through those big hashtags because they people like using big hashtags and because people know that niche hashtags like it might be easy to rank under them, but they're also harder to find and less common to use. So um, I think even though the hashtag is broad and big. Um, you can still find a, a good number of people under them that like match your niche and fit your product. And do you have any hashtag research techniques that you like to use to find specific hashtags, any platforms that you like to use? So I don't necessarily have any outside like platforms that I use for my uh, hashtags. I more so for myself as an influencer, I like going onto my social media channels like TikTok, uh, Instagram, um, Facebook even. I like looking for influencers that are similar to me and in my niche already, seeing what hashtags they're using. And maybe if they apply to me, I'll use those as well. Um, my favorite two hashtag or three hashtags are Amazon finds, which is very big, um, Amazon must haves and uh, deals. And then I'll also put maybe one or two like very niche hashtags, depending on the product that I'm currently talking about. If I have a projector that I'm you know, talking about, for example, I'll be like, hashtag projector or like hashtag projector window trend because that relates to the trend of why people would even want this product in the first place so i'll try to relate it to the this is for tiktok specifically but i'll try to relate it to you know the most popular uh part of the product um i just did a video on a projector for example there's a tiktok trend that kind of goes with it where you uh project a, a window onto your wall and it looks like you know, it's snowing outside or it's a beach outside when it's not. Um, so I'll say like projector window trend. And so people know like, Got oh, it. if I want to do the trend, I'll buy the projector. Well, and the other thing that people can do, you know, uh, TikTok and Instagram and Facebook are all search engines. So yes. they can always start typing in a hashtag and then mm -hmm. suggested hashtags will come up. And so, for example, they could type in projector and then they mm -hmm. might see projector window trend. And if they don't know what that is, they can yes. pull it up and see what the results say. And exactly. that will help them, you know, kind of like, for example, if I'm looking for cat products and I mm -hmm. do hashtag cats and I see what the suggestions are on Insta, on Facebook, on TikTok, mm -hmm. and then I look at the search results, I can kind of start niching down and digging down in, right? Exactly, so, exactly. Great. I love that you aren't really using a research platform for your hashtags and you really are just kind of using the platform itself and searching and looking for other things. Because I think that if we also use those techniques, it'll be helpful for us as well. So mm -hmm. how should we approach an influencer? 
So I'm digging in, I'm finding, I'm doing my research and I find this really great um, cat influencer. I love what they're doing. It's really cool. Maybe they don't have a lot of products that they promote yet that I've seen in their, in their stuff, but I really want to approach them with my product. How do I do it? Should I do it directly through the platform messenger or should I go through one of those influencer websites like Shoutcart? How should I do it? Yeah. So I would say the best way to reach out to an influencer once you like say like, I'm interested in working with this person. They're a good fit. How do I reach out? So I do want to say that most influencers should have a way to contact them, whether that be an email in their bio or, um, if not, then like maybe DMs, um, or you can find them on a different platform if they have their other platforms listed and there's a platform that's easier to get in touch with them. For example, if you're looking at a YouTuber, for example, um, it's, there's no direct message function on YouTube. And if they don't have an email, then I would say, try to go to their Instagram and try to slide into their DMs. But I do want to make a point to say that, um, if this is an influencer of notable size, if they do have a good following already, which they probably do if they're an influencer, it's safe to assume that they probably do already have a couple of brands reaching out to them through their DMs. So then it's a question of how do I frame my message, my outreach message the best to catch their attention and um, start the conversation of how do we work together? And I've gotten this question a lot. It's like, oh, I've emailed these influencers, they don't respond or whatever, they're blah, blah, blah. Um, they could be called unprofessional, for example. I've, I've heard that before. Um, so I would say as a message to brands when doing the outreach, try to um, put out as much information in the first message as possible. Um, I know Amazon sellers are a little iffy about like uh, sharing what product they sell, but keep in mind, this is an influencer. They're not trying to, you know, encroach on your territory. They have a separate job. So I would, I, I get uh, emails sometimes and they're like, I have a product. I want you to promote it. Thanks. And then I have to come back. Then I have to come back and be like, hi, what is your product? What, can you link it? Uh, are you able to pro provide a coupon code for how much? Um, there's, then I have to follow up with a bunch of questions and then it just kind of makes the process a lot longer for both parties. So and then I if they say, like, decide not to move forward with you, then you've just wasted all of your time and yes. you spent all this time with them. Where if they were yes. to approach you and say, hey, Gracie, I love what you do. I love your show. I have a really great product. Here's the promotion I have coming up. Here's the link. Um, what's the process for sharing it on your channel? Would that work? That's it. That's it like share your product. I mean, you don't have to do a whole like history of your company or brand. You don't, you know, that's okay. Leave it short, but just say like, hi, we are a company that sells this. Maybe provide a link. We're a, we're, we'd love to share our product on your channel. We're able to uh, provide a discount code of this for this much. Um, if, if you can mention budget, please do so. Say like we, I mean, if you're reaching out to a small influencer and you're just trying to do a gifted collab, then you could be like, we currently don't have a budget, but we are willing to offer this? Does that work for you? Are you willing to work with us for this? Um, maybe in the future, we can make it a long-term cooperation and we could, once we have a budget, then we can pay you. But for this first one, blah, blah, blah. And then you can start getting into like the details of like what you can offer them as well, instead of like, I have a product, promote it. Yeah. Like, uh, like and then, um, then the influencer, when they get that message, they can make an educated decision or educated answer about like, okay, I like your product. Um, like I'm willing to do it for gifted or whatever budget. Um, and then you can start talking next steps, but the more information you put up front, the more, the faster you can kind of get through that information to get to a decision or answer, whether that be yes or no. Um, and it just saves time for both sides because I, I, I feel like, I feel like managing my inbox is like a full-time job within itself. Yes, <laughs> And it's I because I'm like, it's always like a, What's this information? Can you tell me this? Da, 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 da. It's like a, a fight of information on both sides. <laughs> well, I think that the hard part is the, the hardest part for us brand owners is that mm -hmm. we don't understand the budget side of things, right? Mm -hmm. We know how to set up advertising because it, it, there's a form there that walks us yeah. through it. And that, you know, yeah. I know that my keyword is this and that's yes. where I want my ad to show up. 
So it's very easy. But then when we're dealing with influencers and they don't have a form or anything for us to fill out, maybe some of them have a website and that's great. Like, Hey, you want to mm-hmm. work with me? Here's my form. And then yeah. in the form they could say like, Hey, what's your budget? You know, here's our typical, the different things that we do and here's, you know, the budgets for it. But I think that's the hardest part, honestly, for brand owners is we just mm-hmm. don't know. We don't know what to offer and we don't know what to expect. Um, yeah. So it's very helpful um, to understand <clears throat> what we can expect and um, what that looks like. And, you know, mm-hmm. that way we can set aside a, a budget for it. But I think people are just so clueless on the budget that they're just like, I don't I don't know, like, what am I supposed to offer and what can yeah. I expect? It, as a return on my investment, you know, yeah. and we can see like the level of engagement. I always tell people mm-hmm. when they're looking for influencers that they should look at their engagement on their posts, look at other products that they've promoted and see, you know, how much engagement there was, that kind of thing. And, um, and see what's going on there. But it's also mm-hmm. hard, even if a product was promoted and there was decent engagement, it's hard to know if that led to sales right? A hundred percent. Yes. Um, I think when I completely understand as a brand, like you don't exactly know what to offer, where to even start when talking about budget. And I've had a lot of conversations about this topic, about like, what is a good industry standard? What should I expect? What should I charge as an influencer? And what should I budget out for influencer marketing as a brand? Um, I think the answer that we have decided on (laughs) is unfortunately there is no industry standard because every influencer is different i'm in the tiktok deal space and my engagement looks like this but somebody else might be more in the amazon space and they might have a completely different conversion engagement rate and different er so there's no industry standard unfortunately but i definitely think that the brand can make some kind of judgment on that based on the the influencers statistics and their presence online already for example if somebody is just starting out as an influencer a couple thousand followers they're just getting started they would probably be more willing to do a gifted or just like no budget like just product collaboration with a brand because they want that experience of making content relating to like selling a product um, and they just want to get started in it and when but you say you, gifted, does that mean like, okay, I'm giving you my product as a gift? Correct. Like I'm giving you a free product in return for you making content about it. And there's no actual like money being in exchange. exchanged. Yeah. Got it. Okay. I just wanted and to so, make sure that we understood yeah. that term yes, yes. and whether or not it was like multiple <clears throat> products that we were giving them. I know mm-hmm. sometimes I've seen people do um, giveaways for their followers too. Like, yeah, Hey, I'm going to yeah. give you a gift. Plus, I'm going to give you a couple of extra ones that you can mm-hmm. do a giveaway with your followers yes. and just want your feedback, that kind of thing. Um, so I love that. And, and I totally understand that every influencer is going to be different. And it's also on the brand, too, because yeah. the brand has to come up with you, you need to have a really great looking product. You need to have a good quality product if you're driving them to your Amazon listing your listing needs to look good, right? Like you can't blame that on the influencer, right? You can't Mm -hmm. say, oh, well, they didn't convert. Well, you know, you do need to have a good product and, and, and all of that. So I love that. So let's talk about the different ways that influencers can promote products. So you're Mm -hmm. a deals influencer. How are the different ways? What are the different things that you can do to promote products and to promote the deals? Yeah. So I currently am just basically making a video that's sharing the deal. Like I'll, I'll say like, oh, I found a deal on this. I'll, I'll point out some like talking points or key points about the product. It does this. It can be used for this and da, da, da. And then I'll be like, and if you want 50% off or 60% off or even 40, 30, then I put the code in the comments. I linked it in my bio if you're interested. And these are affiliate links, which I make very clear everywhere. Um, and then if people are interested, then they can take advantage of the deal. And I love when people are like, ah, oh, I got it. I've wanted it for so long. Thank you. I was able to. And then like, I love that. So there's that way of how I share content. And then there is a more like lifestyle influencer way of sharing content, which is more so like, oh, like, look at this product. Um, I'm using it in my daily life and there's no deal or coupon involved, but this is my experience with it. So if you guys want to check it out, 
it's linked in my bio or whatever, whatever. It's more of like a organic, like this is something I use in my daily life type of content. And that could be on Instagram, Instagram story, um, even TikTok a lot of times. Um, and then there's kind of a different way of um, promoting products, which is um, n- not really new per se, but growing very rapidly as of this year, which is live streaming. So as I'm an A-list Amazon live streamer. So basically I'm able to work with brands in that capacity as well. And as an A-list Amazon live streamer, my Amazon live streams are uh, do get posted on the Amazon dot com homepage, which, you know, I can only imagine how much traffic that gets. Um, And I do believe Amazon Live is more for brand awareness, um, as opposed to just sheer volume of sales, which I would probably refer TikTok more for sheer volume, volume of sales, and Amazon Live for more brand awareness, and maybe like somebody doing a demo of your product or somebody just talking about their experience of it, like unboxing or something. So that's a different way of talking about products as well. And Amazon Live creates a really good way of like, this is the product you want it, just click right there and you're you're already there. Like it's it's a very seamless process. And I think Amazon um, compared to other real retailers make it like very good for impulse purchases. Um, you literally just, you know, switch apps, scroll a bar and it shows up at your door and there's nothing easier than that. And, I, and so I think that like kind of plays into the culture of like, oh, impulse purchase. And that's kind of a really good way of selling. <laughs> yes, definitely. I think, um, and I definitely want to talk about Amazon Live today mm-hmm. um, yeah. a little bit. Um, but I, I know it's still very new. It's still yes. very kind yes. of up and coming. There's not a lot of brands doing it. And for mm-hmm. that reason, the brands that jump on early can do very well um, mm-hmm. because there's sometimes the only live videos out there. But yeah. also on that note, you know, it's, it's, it's still growing. There's still a yes, lot I agree. Of, to be done. So it's like, it's yes, great that yes. you're also doing that stuff on TikTok and other platforms yes. as mm-hmm. we're growing the Amazon live, but I love that Amazon's doing that. That's awesome. Yes. Thanks for tuning in to part one of this episode. Join us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for live Q&A and bonus content after the recording at sellerroundtable.com. Sponsored by the ultimate software tool for Amazon sales and growth, SellerSEO.com and AmazingAtHome.com.